As one Saab driver to another, welcome. I'm Jeffrey Parker, and I actually have experience with two kinds of Saabs, the car and my Draken fighter jet. That's my job. I'm president and pilot for a high-performance jet testing company, and we fly Saab fighter jets in our business. Before flying these jets, I drove two Saab turbos. After flying them, I simply had to try the newest of the Saab models. I was very impressed with the Saab cars for three big reasons. First, I like the way it feels. They say that a good pilot can fly by the seat of their pants, by instinct. So it's no accident that when an aircraft company like Svenska Aeroplan AB or Saab started building cars, they engineered the center of gravity to run right through the driver's hips, where the human center of gravity is as well. That way your body can sense what the machine is doing faster than you can think about it, just like a fighter jet. Second, I like its refinement. My Saab jet needs only six hours of maintenance for every hour of flying, for instance compared to 25 hours for an F-16. I can routinely fly a dozen flights in a row without a single adjustment, because the plane's not unnecessarily complicated. The Saab cars are the same way. Elegant, rugged, and refined. Both Saabs are rock solid at top speed, and the handling, I'd say, is flawless, smooth, and stable. And third, I like the character of the company. Michelangelo described a slab of raw marble as a statue struggling to escape. His job was to remove what wasn't necessary. Saab seems to take the same approach. All the pretensions are stripped away to reveal the finished product. Some people look at a Saab and see something eccentric. That's precisely wrong. When the rest of the car world focused on fins, Saab focused on wings. Not for style, but for the shape, to reduce wind drag. As a fighter pilot, I find it interesting that the Model 001, the first Saab car ever, had a drag coefficient of 0.32. A lot of car makers will be proud of that today. But the 001 was built in 1947. That kind of thinking is behind every detail in the cockpit of your new Saab. It's there for a reason. The people who look a little deeper than most understand that fact. I'm one of those people, and I'm proud Saab asked me to introduce this audio tour of your new car. Some folks call it a cocoon because it's protective. Some call it a cradle because it's comforting. I call it a cockpit because it keeps me alert and relaxed. It tells me what I need to know and doesn't distract me with the rest. So to do it right, play this tour through the audio system in your car. Park somewhere safe, away from traffic, with the emergency brake on and the gearbox in park or neutral. Then sit back and listen while we take you through some of the more unusual features of your Saab cockpit and the reasons behind them. A few favorite little touches that are thoughtful and smart, just like you. Welcome to the cockpit of your new Saab. It really is different for a reason. The purpose of this audio tour is to explain how things work in your new Saab and why. It's best to listen to it in your car. First, Familiarize yourself with the audio controls so you can pause or repeat a section. Or you can just turn the power off at any time if you want to try out a feature. Go ahead, try that now. See, it came back on just where you left it. Now, sit back and consider what sets your new Saab apart from other cars. Some differences you can't see. Look straight ahead, for instance. What do you see? A lot, thanks to the wraparound windshield. A Saab innovation that came from our aircraft heritage. Some differences are obvious, like the ignition by your right knee. Another touch for pilot efficiency. By moving your hand only an inch or two, you can do four things. Turn the key, latch your seatbelt, release the handbrake, and shift into gear. Plus, the key's safely out of the way. So in a fender bender, you won't hurt your knee, a common injury with standard ignitions. Try it. Pull over your seat belt and latch it. See how your hand's right next to the ignition, the brake, and the shift lever? The ignition switch also locks your transmission, so you have to put an automatic into park and a manual into reverse before you can remove your key. For now, make sure you keep the car in park or neutral with the parking brake set, and we'll review some features. 
Toward the end, you can step outside and inspect a few external features you should know about. You're sitting in a powerful seat with more built-in intelligence than some entire cars have. Try the power seat controls on the left side of your cushion. Up, down, back, forth, and tilt and pitch. If you chose the optional memory feature, once they're adjusted, you can save the settings to memory for up to three different drivers. And that includes outside rear view mirror settings too. If you live somewhere cold, maybe you chose the optional heated seats. Did you know Saab invented them? A classic innovation from the 60s and our airplanes. Another option this year is the ventilated seats to wick moisture away and keep you cool and dry in the summer. Check your owner's manual for instructions. To adjust the outside mirrors, use the big round button just in front of the driver's side window. You don't have to look at the button to use it. Just use your fingertip to feel for the bumps at the 12, 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions and press directly on the bumps. You can't accidentally change the settings by pressing anywhere else. Now, look at the passenger side mirror. Notice that it has special optics on the outside edge. It's convex to stretch your field of vision by an extra one-third. One more neat trick with the mirrors if you got the memory seat option. Look at the adjustment switch again. See the little button beside it? That's the backup feature. When you're in reverse and push this button, the passenger mirror automatically shifts down and in to show the curb and your rear wheel so you can parallel park easier. Try it now. Keep your foot on the brake and ease the car into reverse. Then press the little mirror button. See the mirror move? Now put the car in park or neutral and it goes back to normal. If you have an SE or Aero model, your inside rear view mirror will automatically adjust itself so it won't blind you whenever it senses a car behind you with its brights on. Let's play with the controls on the steering column. First, adjust the steering wheel, but only if the car is completely stopped. The wheel telescopes and tilts once you unlock the lever that runs front and back along the bottom of the steering column. Unlock, adjust, then lock it back. Try the horn. Press firmly on any corner of the center pad, not in the middle. That's the airbag. Turn signals are controlled by the left-hand lever, and cruise controls are there, too. Read the owner's manual to learn how they work. And keep in mind, the main trick is to remember that the same motion turns cruise control both off and on. Just look for the light in the instrument panel to see which mode you're in. The left lever controls the headlight dimmers, too. Just pull it toward you to toggle between high and low beams. Pulling it halfway and letting go before it clicks lets you quickly flash your beams just once. Now, try the windshield washer. It's on the right-hand lever. It's different from other cars. You don't need to overdo it. Your Saab uses eight high-pressure nozzles, six on the windshield and one on each headlight, that actually use less fluid than standard systems. So one quick squirt is all you need. It covers the whole area of the windshield and headlights, and a few swipes of the wipers gets it all clean. The small wipers on the headlights operate with the windshield washers every time, and they're great for removing bugs and dirty snow that can block the beams. By the way, Saab invented them. If you've purchased a 9.5 wagon, the rear window washer is controlled by the button at the end of the lever. It makes one complete swipe automatically when you back up with the wipers on. You can adjust it for intermittent swipes by controls on the same lever. Check your owner's manual for details. Let's check out the lights. Saab lighting is a little different from usual, too. Your headlights are always on. That way, other drivers can see you better. If you want, your dealer can change that setting, but we recommend you use it for safety. You've got two fog lights in front, but just one in the rear, 
so cars behind you don't mistake it for a brake light. Your front fog lights work only on dim. When you arrive where you're going, the Follow Me Home feature keeps your headlights on until you're safely inside. Check your owner's manual for instructions. Look up above you. You'll see some overhead controls for the reading lamp and courtesy lamp. The circular star toward the center of the roof is an interior temperature sensor for the climate control system. The sunroof control is up on the ceiling too. It opens from the front and also tilts from the rear. And there's one simple trick to remember no matter what. Always hold the close button down until the mechanism stops moving completely. The little movement at the end may seem like it's opening again, but it's not. The roof is just seating itself. So remember, when you're closing the sunroof, hold the close button down until the roof stops moving. Take a look at the instrument panel. The wraparound control center is a lot like an airplane's. In fact, there's a night panel feature that dims everything except what you need to know, just like in a Saab jet. The switch is on the far right, below the Saab information display, which is just above the radio. Try it next time it's dark. The console goes dark except for vital information. Don't worry, if you need new information, like your fuel is low, the panel will light up and alert you right away. The Saab information display, just above the radio, can show a full menu of computerized features. You should consult your owner's manual to master the basics. The audio system has computerized features too. It'll automatically change volume as you speed up or slow down. So read the section in the owner's manual under radio. One safety feature in particular you should notice is that you can control basic functions like play, stop, search, and volume with buttons on your steering wheel. That keeps your eyes on the road. And another smart feature, you can pick up or change the starting volume of your sound system every time you use it. Some of the controls are meant for everyday use, like the temperature control. It has two zones, driver and passenger, so you can adjust for different tastes. There's a thermostat sensor under the small holes right in front of the rear view mirror ceiling mount. So don't aim the center cooling vent straight up. You'll fool the system into thinking the cabin's cooler than it really is. By the way, the dark plastic dome on top of the dashboard is a solar sensor that checks the angle and intensity of the sun and adjusts accordingly. Just keep it unobstructed. For refreshments on the road, look to the right of the radio. There's a slim vertical inset. That's the in-dash cup holder, and it pops out and swivels into place when you press it. Make sure you don't force oversized cups in it. To keep things cold, as cold as 50 degrees, use the glove compartment's icebox feature. It has a special refrigeration vent, so it's like a little refrigerator for food and drinks. The center console between the seats slides forward and back for your personal preference. It opens for storage, and the cup holder inside is removable, and there's a coin storage system for tolls. A word about the locking system. See the door lock switch in the center console? It works only if the driver's door is shut. Locking is simple. One click locks everything, all the doors and the trunk, whether you lock from inside using the console switch or from the key inside or outside. Unlocking is a slightly different story. One push on the console switch unlocks the driver's door, and a second push unlocks everything else. If you're unlocking from the outside, using the key, you have three buttons, lock, unlock, and trunk. Push any button for more than five seconds, and you'll set off a loud panic alarm. Your dealer can customize some of these features if you like. Although Saab believes the standard operation is the best way to protect yourself from strangers entering your car. Safety is also why your key works only within about 20 feet of the car you're close enough to see someone try to slip in. It's extremely important to keep your extra key in a safe place. There's a computer chip in it, and if you lose both keys, 
Even your dealer can't start your car without replacing an entire computer circuit. You might want to order an extra key or two from your dealer, just in case. And ask about some programmable features that you can change, like how your car beeps when it's armed, or how the doors lock automatically. A couple of more interior controls. The trunk release and fuel cap release are on your left. Anytime you gas up, make sure to tighten the cap until it starts to make loud clicks. That means it's tight. If it's not, an environmental vapor control system may cause a warning light to come on. A word about fuel. We recommend using high-octane fuel. The higher the octane, the better your engine will run. If you use lower octanes, the car will still run fine, but the computer will take steps to prevent pinging by backing off on the ignition timing so you'll have less horsepower with lower octane. Now, before you step outside, make sure your car's in park or neutral with the brake on, and pop your trunk button. If you have a 9.5 wagon, pushing the button unlocks the tailgate. And that's about it for the inside of the car. Let's run through a few features you can inspect when you step outside your new car. If you've popped your trunk button, you'll be able to lift the rear compartment. Open one of the rear doors and pull the rear seat cushions forward. Push the release button next to the headrest and fold the rear seat back down. You'll see the trunk space open up into the main cabin. You can carry extra long items, even skis, this way. Look at the open rear doors. You'll find child-proof settings on the edge of the open door. These prevent the inside door controls from working, so your kids stay safe. Use your key or a coin to toggle the switch off or on. Finally, open the driver's door and you'll see a compartment at the far left of the dashboard. It pops off to expose the main fuse box. There's another fuse box under the hood. Consult your owner's manual for details. In terms of maintenance, treat the paint just like you would any fine automobiles. It takes about six months for the best paints to cure completely and harden, so avoid car washes that use brushes, and be careful not to clean or rinse your paint with rags that might contain grit. And finally, if your car hasn't been rinsed off in a week or so, you might occasionally notice black powdery deposits from the brakes building up on your wheels after a week of continuous driving, especially on the front wheels. This is normal and comes from the pads being optimized using non-asbestos materials. Rinse off the black powder every week or so. It should come off easily. If you let it stay longer, it gets harder to remove. A final word about safety. Talk to your dealer about child seat tethers to tie down any child seats to the proper anchor points. And read the manual about airbag safety. You shouldn't sit too close or too far from them. Your Saab has an anti-lock braking system, or ABS, so get used to the pulsing action of the brake pedal in a vacant parking lot if you're not used to ABS. Follow the maintenance and service guidelines in your manual. Read about the roadside service you're entitled to and familiarize yourself with your warranties. Remember, wherever you drive, you're covered by the Saab Roadside Assistance Plan. There's an 800 number open for help 24 hours a day. 1-800- 852-9001. It's printed on the sleeve of this CD or tape, and it's in your manual, too. You'll see a website address there, too, www.saabusa.com. And we encourage you to visit. If you have any questions about your Saab, you can call the Saab Customer Assistance Center at one 800 955 9007. And that's about it. Remember, every feature in your Saab has a logical purpose. This is a car whose sum total is made of countless intelligent decisions. At Saab, we believe that style is subservient to substance. And we've built a substantial car. Sure, it's a little different. So are you, probably, for the right reasons. Viva la différence! Buckle up, put it in gear, and enjoy.